participate at this conference third time uh, and uh, what happens to you if you're the last speaker in a session almost everything all, all your points were already mentioned so I will try to my presentation will be shorter and uh, I will try to, to just summarize some ideas which were mentioned today so uh, I'm gonna speak about I will share with you some ideas about HTA. Uh, this means Health Technology Assessment, uh, which, um, which is uh, uh, evaluating the impact or the consequences of different health interventions or so-called health technologies. Uh, impact as uh, medical impact, social impact, ethical impact, and especially economical impact. Uh, <laughs> Yes, about uh, uh, the definition of osteoporosis or the quality of osteoporosis, we heard a lot today. Uh, well, after uh, 1991, I think this is an important date in, in your history. So after this date, uh, the definition of osteoporosis uh, uh, included also the bone quality. Only bone quantity was, uh, was included before. And why is this important? Because we have some, uh, some risk factors which are, are influencing the bone mineral density, so the bone quantity. And we have different risk factors which are influencing the bone quality independent of the BMD. And of course we have other risk factors which will influence fall risk or extraskeletal, so non-bone uh, factors. <coughs> So this is why focusing uh, only on the uh, BMD, on bone, uh, on bone uh, we will identify less than half of women who will fracture. This was mentioned uh, today. So we can use to, to diagnose osteoporosis also uh, confirming the previous fractures. Uh, but of course we, we wish to identify uh, osteoporosis or, uh, or the risk of, uh, of fractures before this happens. So this is why we will use uh, Frank Sand as I, I saw, uh, as, and as I know, Ukraine is included in, uh, in Frank's and uh, it will be, um, so the new form which is based on the local, the local data and the local evaluations, uh, fracture risk, uh, will be included in the Ukrainian uh, model. So, the, uh, about uh, epidemiology, we know that more than 200 million people are affected uh, by uh, the sinus uh, disease, and the hip fractures are projected to increase substantially. But this is interesting, uh, it's, it will have a very brutal dynamic increase uh, but this is due to the demographic changes uh, because in Europe and in the United States we already have a plateau, a plateau yeah, uh, regarding the, the age-adjusted fracture rates. So uh, more than a plateau we have a decline in the United States and in Europe uh, in the age-adjusted uh, fracture rates. This doesn't happen in uh, in Asia, for example. Uh, so these are, uh, as you can see, in Europe, due to demographic changes, due to the aging of, of population and uh, the increase in life expectancy, there will be a doubling of, uh, of hip fractures uh, until to, uh, 2050, uh, and there will be a huge increase in Asia and South America. Uh, the most consistent data, worldwide data, we have uh, uh, from 2010, so this is why I also refer to these uh, data. The five largest European countries plus Sweden uh, had in 2010 uh, 2.5 million new fractures, and uh, <clears throat> these were uh, 
the economic impact of these structures was uh, more than 30 billion euros, and uh, they were related to uh, so these queues to more than uh, 34 uh, deaths, and the quality, the quality adjusted life years. Uh, lost due to these fractures were 850,000. The uh, projected number of, uh, of fractures uh, is 3.2, uh, projected to, to 2025, is uh, representing an almost 30% increase. Uh, if we compare it with other uh, other uh, diseases, we can uh, see that osteoporosis fractures gives more hospitalization uh, days than stroke, heart attack, and breast cancer together. Uh, and then see the economic costs of uh, of these uh, fractures. Uh, in the the same uh, countries, these uh, five largest countries plus Sweden, we had in uh, 2010. Uh, 31 billion euros uh, cost of, uh, of uh, uh, fractures and how this is distributed uh, almost two-thirds uh, actually two-thirds of these uh, of these uh, expenses were represented by the by the cost of treating acute fractures one almost one-third uh, is represented by the long-term care of the fractures, and only 5% is represented by the, uh, the medical uh, prophylaxis of, uh, of fractures. Uh, when we talk about in uh, HDA, we, we use when we want to ex express the cost effectiveness or cost utility, we use this, uh, this notion of ICER, which is incremental cost effectiveness ratio. Uh, and this uh, represents, for example, we want to compare a new drug with a former drug, then we see the difference between the, the costs of these drugs, and this will be divided by the difference in effectiveness of these drugs. So this means that the, the additional cost of one unit of benefit, uh, one unit of benefit can be a fracture, for example, or one quality adjusted life year gained. And what is the plus uh, price or cost for this, uh, for this additional uh, benefit? And then the WHO uh, uh, suggested because of course, we have limited resources. Each uh, financial, re uh, each country do have uh, different financial resources. So this is why we used to to have for uh, for each uh, um, quality adjusted life year uh, different prices. And the WHO, the World Health Organization, suggested to to use three times the GDP of a country. So uh, in order to have uh, uh, proportional expense or proportional prices for a, uh, for an intervention. So <clears throat> the uh, cost efficiency ratio threshold is uh, uh, is uh, suggested to be three times the GDP per capita of a country, and uh, and the intervention threshold, so the willingness to pay in a country, could be two times the GDP of a country. Um, Yes, here we have a threshold ratio, and everything which is uh, the whole domain which is uh, um, uh, under the threshold ratio is uh, is uh, actually a, a, a good uh, or a cost effective uh, a cost effective uh, uh, domain which is uh, uh, which for the the country is uh, is recommended. Uh, if we talk about about uh, medication, uh, one of the problems with the medication is that uh, that uh, less than half of the patients, for example, on oral bisphosphonates, are persistent after one year, uh, and only one third after two years, or or will persist two years. And of course, the the fracture reduction ratio will will change accordingly. So uh, here we can compare a patient who was persistent in one year uh, 
after one year with another patient who, who uh, quit the treatment. Another problem is that uh, here we saw the patients who, who start taking the, the drugs, but there are, uh, the main problem is that the majority of patients don't even uh, start to, to treat themselves. Here we see the, <coughs> uh, the treatment gap in some, uh, some countries. Um, the, red, uh, the red part of the line uh, represents the number of patients uh, who are eligible for a treatment but they do not take it. And the blue one is the, represents the rate of the patients who, who are taking uh, uh, treatment. I'm very proud of, my, of the country I, I uh, come from. Romania has 94% treatment gap. That means that 94% uh, of men who are eligible for treatment do not take any, any medicine. Uh, however, in Europe we have some better figures, like uh, almost 60 in case of man. Okay, uh, so the, we have some currently major developments. We have some major developments currently in the methods of uh, HDA. One of them is the incorporation of adherence or pers persistence uh, into the pharmacoeconomical analysis. And another one is the, is the FRAG, so a better uh, fracture risk uh, uh, prediction due to, due to FRAGs. Uh, and uh, other two uh, major advances are that we can use microsimulation models and we can also, in case when we don't have uh, uh, RCTs or randomized controlled trials uh, directly comparing different components, then we can use uh, indirect uh, comparisons and network meta-analysis to provide uh, evidence for selecting the uh, right option. So in, in summary, uh, we know that we, we have limited resources everywhere and, and the new major innovations, the recent, uh, recent innovations are, are expensive. So it's, it's critical to find the, the best allocation uh, to our resources. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, finally, I will. Uh, this is this is in my country a, a very creative. This is fun actually. Uh, a very creative uh, screening method of osteoporosis, but this works only uh, in winter time. So if you survive uh, passing the steps. That means, without fracturing, that means that you don't have sarcopenia or osteoporosis. Uh, or you are very smart and you, you, go, uh, you, you choose another, uh, another route to passing the, the uh, steps. And this was taken by me one year ago when I was traveling in North Romania. And there is a village, a very isolated village, Ukrainian, poor Ukrainian village, and I found these these very nice kids there. So well, thank you. These questions. No questions. Thank you. The next session.